Hello everyone, so today I'm uh, Easy Yogurt decided to make the final first video about uh, history events, fights, battles and uh, finally I created it I created it yesterday but I wanted to make project of Second World War like easier version but uh, today I will tell you small history of defending the fortress of Soviets yes and uh, it's it will video will be very short and maybe tomorrow yes tomorrow I will make a video about uh, Russian Empire in Heroes of Iron 4 or if you want I make uh, another historical video so write comments if you want we start Uh, for the Soviet, it w was built in territory of modern Poland in the past Russian Empire. Uh, it's here. It's here to understand. Uh, it's near to uh, Litva, Lithuanian border, and uh, it was very important uh, strategic region because. It defended currently between the Neman and Vitsula rivers. Uh, it isn't only one fortress, of course, it was a line of fortress. To understand, I will show you a little bit. He, from... Uh, I'm sorry... From uh, Königsberg border to Dnepr. To understand, it, will, it was it line. It similar line and uh, it was uh, very important because it defended ways uh, building St. Petersburg and uh, Vian St. Petersburg and uh, capital of Russian Empire and uh, Russian Empire I made uh, red uh, lines to show you how ways from Vian uh, Berlin and St. Petersburg connected in uh, Soviets. So you can see it's a very important. It's one of the shortest way for St. Petersburg. And uh, it was uh, it was very important again because if uh, Germany want to move to capital, they must uh, uh, move to north. Here Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, and and uh, Austro-Hungary must uh, move through Poland and to uh, similar countries. But uh, as Soviets, it's a line which defended uh, borders of Russian Empire very long time to understand. And only in uh, 1916, when uh, defending of it fortress line became uh, unimportant and started uh, uh, evacuation from uh, Poland, Lit Lit Litva and uh, part of Ukraine, uh, only in its situation uh, Soviet surrenders. No, Alexander, German soldiers easily without fight took it. Uh, to understand the borders after evacuation from uh, first line of front uh, happened similar. From it line, for it lines, and from it lines to it lines. And Everyone who tell you that it's uh, Russian army became uh, weak, it's false because it was easily evacuation because uh, was chance to get uh, caught in circle because it's very easy and if German uh, command and Austro-Hungarian command will be united, uh, they. 
then they could easily circle Russian army, the part of Russian army in Poland. Uh, with the fortress of Soviets uh, happened one of the most uh, interesting, horrible uh, battle in history called uh, Attack of the Dead Man. Uh, it's a horrible fight where Germans used gas. Of course, they used it in the uh, First World War very often, in France also. But uh, it's special battle because uh, Russian soldiers got up after gas attack. 60 soldiers from uh, 1,000 soldiers. 60 soldiers, uh, the last uh, people in uh, battalion, got up and attacked 2,000 Germans. Uh, they didn't cry or shout like, help, I feel very bad, I want to die. No, they was calm. And uh, everything about the sword in that moment, how to... Uh, stick a binder to into the enemy last time they know that after that they will die so it they went to die again because they died already because they, they spent to gas attack and uh, after gas attack no one uh, still alive our first attack on uh, our soviets uh, happened in September 1914. The fortress was attacked by units of the 8th uh, German army to understand its uh, 40 infantry battalions, which went into a massive attack. In September 21 of 1914, with a multiple numerical advantage, the Germans decided to push the field defense of the Russian troops to the line that allowed them to conduct an artillery uh, bombardment uh, of the fortress. At the same time, 60 guns of uh, 203 mm caliber were transferred from Konigsberg by the German command to the fortress. The attack began on September 26 of 1914. Two days later, the Germans launched an attack on the fortress, but it was a surprise suppressed by heavy Russian artillery fire. The next day, the Russian troops conducted two flanking and counterattacks, which forced the Germans to stop firing and retreat in a hurry with German artillery. The first German attack showed that the, the infantry field the positions in swampy area two kilometers from Fort Number 2 were located too close to the fortress and this allowed the enemy to conduct artillery fire. To, uh, I will tell easier, uh, 40 parts of a German, German army pushed Russian positions in a Soviet's first time and they used very, very big guns. 203 mm caliber It's very big for each time to understand, it was a uh, short of six months of war, and uh, it was only first attack. It was very important for Germany because it, uh, if it uh, fortress will stay, it will be the biggest problem for German command to move into Russia. Uh, second uh, attack was. Uh, a more successful and uh, second uh, attack the front line approached the uh, Soviet fortress in the winter of 1915 as a result of the Mazurian battle by early February the 57th infantry division covering the left flank on the 10th army had withdrawn to the uh, Soviet area it also defended the fortress which was at the junction of the retreating tanks and uh, 12 uh, Russian armies. On February, on 3rd February 1915, a heavy, prolonged, uh, prolonged, uh, 
prolonged uh, battle for the first line of advanced uh, Russian field uh, positions began. Russian units in uh, these difficult conditions held uh, back the enemy in small trenches for five days. The 84th uh, Shiravan Infantry Reg Regiment and uh, the 101st uh, Param Infantry Regiment arrived to help uh, according to the decisions of the Garzon command on the night of February 9th February the fortress infantry was withdrawn to the second line of uh, field fortifications which were more prepared to understand easier it's uh, it was uh, uh, Russian uh, positions moved uh, into Russia more because uh, Germans uh, could uh, easily, with their big guns, uh, artillery, Russian positions, and a lot of soldiers will die under fire. But on second uh, line of forces, uh, as here written that they were more prepared, it's true, and to here was small a chance to die from uh, artillery fire so it was a tactical decision and it was very good decision for russian command the fortress was defended by uh, 26 battalion battalions uh, 26 uh, field uh, guns uh, 1300 Hundreds and fortress artillery in the amount of about 69 guns of uh, 41 line and 6 inch uh, calibers. Of the specific number of uh, battalions, only 11 accounted for the share of priority units. Seven battalions were second priority and eight uh, battalions military. Milita. It's like police. Uh, little prepared for a serious defense of the fortress. Uh, the fortress was besieged by the German 11th Landwehr Division under the command of General Boens, with units attached to it, only about 26 battalions and taking reserves. The German troops numbered about 40 battalions. The Germans had 66 and 68 heavy artillery and Russian uh, Marshal Kataev Konstantin Vasilievich, head of the second department of defense of the Osovets fortress for the next two days despite fierce attacks Russian units held uh, uh, the line however the withdrawal of Russian units from the unprepared for Fort field area allowed the German artillery to start firing at the forts again on February uh, 13 February with heavy siege uh, guns of 100 uh, or the biggest uh, uh, 420 mm caliber. The fire was conducted in uh, volleys of 360 shells every four minutes. To the extent it's very it uh, make every four minutes. It's similar to battle for Verdun, but Verdun continued uh, only 303 days. When a Soviet stood more than uh, one year and six months, when command asked to hold its fortification only 48 hours, two days. To understand, it's a really glorious a battle, but uh, it's forgotten. It's really forgotten. The part of Russian people don't know about it, and a lot of uh, people forgot about it. Maybe because a lot of all of people who uh, fought in the First World War that. Uh, of course, they all were heroes, Germans too, uh, because they fought for their country, they they didn't know for what they fought, like, 
they say uh, someone said fight for your country for family for god and they agree for it and they fought for god family and country okay uh, continue uh, during uh, the week of shelling 200 or 250,000 heavy shells were fired at the fortress. Also, especially for the shelling of the fortress, the Germans uh, were transferred to a Soviet fourth siege mortars, Skoda, caliber 305 mm. On top of the fortress was bombed by German airplanes. The command of the general staff, believing that it was damaging the impossible, asked the garrison commander to hold out of for at least 48 hours, two days. The fortress stood for another six months. Like, each six months in 1915 and one year of uh, 1914. After several mortars of the largest caliber were damaged, the German command took these guns out of reach of the defenders of the forces. The second line of advanced uh, positions also held. This failure forced the command of the German army to move on this sector of the fort to the positional actions which can which continued until the beginning of July. It isn't... Uh, it fought... Uh, it isn't... Uh, Skoda... 305mm calibre. It's... Uh, artillery which used in... Uh, Battle for Verdun. Because... Uh, another photos were... A little bit... Bad and they were... Really... Colorful, and it will be uncomfortable to show uh, colored paintings of First World War when it happened very extremely important uh, battle. And finally, the last battle is third attack. For more than ten days, the German command waited for the right wind uh, direction. On July. On, four, on July 24 of 1915, at 4 o'clock in the morning, I started uh, with the opening of artillery fire. German units used a portion gas of dark green color, a mixture of chlorine and bromine against the defenders of the fortress. A gas wave of 9 uh, or 11 meters in height uh, penetrated to a depth uh, of uh, more than 20 kilometers, had a strong impact for the first 13 kilometers, after which uh, the effect of gas is greatly weakened. Having uh, at the beginning 2 kilometers in a uh, width, the, the gas wave immediately began to expand strongly along the front and after 10 kilometers had a width of uh, 8 kilometers. Also, the garrison took all the recommended methods to stop the gases. They were ineffective. Burning tow and straw in front of the trenches, watering the parapets with uh, lime mortar, putting non uh, respirators didn't help. Almost everyone who didn't take shelters in the premises was fatally gassed. At the ve vegetation uh, in the fortress turned black and uh, wheat heard. The grass uh, lay on the ground. The leaves on the trees turned yellow. The flower petals flew off. All copper objects, part of guns and shells uh, in the open uh, air have were uh, covered with a thick layer of uh, chlorine oxide. Considering that the garrison defending the fortress position was dead, the German units went uh, on the offensive. 
offensive. 14 battalions of the Landwehr and at least 7,000 infantry went on the attack. When the German infantry approached the to- with the four fort- uh, fortifications of the fortress, the remaining defenders of the first line, the remains of 13 rot- rot- 13th rota of uh, the 226 uh, Zemlanskova Palka, a little more than 60 people from uh, 1000, attacked uh, enemies last time in uh, and first time in history. The soldiers were shaking, uh, shaking with a wild cough caused by chemical burns to their lungs. Their faces wrapped in bloody rags. The skin may have a greenish tinge, and the cornea was darker than usual, as is the case with the, the chlorine poisoning. The unexpected attack and the sight of the attackers terrified the German units and put them to fight. Thank you everyone who watched that video. And Again, uh, if you want similar videos, I can of course make a presentation and uh, tomorrow make a video. But uh, now I have plan to make uh, to make m- like uh, change s- small change uh, history of Russian Empire in the First World War and uh, play Hearts of Iron like. Hearts of Iron with changing of uh, Russian way in the First World War. So, thank you everyone who watched again. I think you will remember it sometimes, because it's a really forgotten history. Now everyone know about it, and uh, uh, please, if it isn't uh, difficult, press uh, like. So, thank you everyone. Goodbye.